Even men at the top of their game find themselves wanting more from life. Whether it's more meaning, unshakable confidence, a hotter sex life, a bigger impact, more money, deeper love, solid friendships, a powerful legacy. Find out how good you can have it on this episode of Man Alive. Head over to shaynajamescoaching.com slash manalive to get outtakes, raw footage, and bonus videos you can only get there. You can also grab your copy of The Unknown Power That Accelerates Your Career and Solidifies Your Confidence with Women. Welcome to this episode of Man Alive. I am thrilled to be here today with Ray Arada, who is the founder, creator of the Better Man Conference and, um, and co-founder also of a gender leadership group, Advocates for Business Inclusion. So I think today is actually going to be, I'm going to give you a little more info about Ray as we dive in, but I think today is going to be a really interesting and powerful conversation on the topic of gender inclusion and also what it is to actually be a better man. So, Ray, thank you for being here today. Thank you so much, Sam. Yeah. And a little, a little intro before we dive in. So, Ray is an integrative leadership coach, an inclusion consultant, and a cultural facilitator, and has over 10,000 hours of men's personal leadership work under his belt, and really brings a passion for working with men to the very relevant topic of enlisting the engagement of men to support gender equality. So his personal mission involves getting male executives to stand up and stand strong when it comes to including and advancing women. And, you know, as we dive into this, I just want to first say thank you for doing this work in the world, you know, for myself being a woman and for other women. I feel really appreciative of your mission, you know, and, and what you see in the world and what you see as possible. Thank you so much. Every time a woman thanks me for that, it's like fuel. And mm -hmm. so the shout out to the men who are listening is um, it feels really good when, when uh, I come from my heart and I do something that's bigger than me. Yeah. And uh, those women in your life could be your partners, your spouses, your daughters, your sisters, the women you work with, work for, who work yeah. under you. It, the list goes on and on and on. Yeah. Yeah. It's really beautiful. And, um, you know, go check out www.bettermanconference.com as we're getting into this because the conference is coming up and I would love for, you know, as many men as you can hold to be there. Um, and, you know, we were talking a little bit before we started recording and I was saying that it's interesting and we, we were talking about how we could dive into this from a coaching perspective and I don't think we're going to today, but maybe at some point, but you know, as a woman, there's a part of me that thinks, wow, what is in this for men? There's another part of me that knows, oh my God, you know, men and women actually collaborating and respecting and, um, you know, lifting each other up is of course what's necessary, you know, for us to keep evolving and growing and all of that. But it is also interesting that there is a part of me that thinks, you know, why, why would a man want to do this? Or that there could be fears of what a man might lose in, you know, bringing women, lifting women up. So I'm, I'm really curious, you know, about your perspectives, not to go into my own... <laughs> history right now but what is in this for men well you you raised the sixty four thousand dollar question had <laughs> the question that companies and women's organizations and women conferences come to us about and yeah. so one of the things th there's several answers to what's in it for men and like i told you earlier it's hard for me to turn off coaching ears yes but, yes you know there's the fears and the, uh, what one might say the why nots. Yeah. But my reframe is that is let's get guys connected to the why. Like why would they come? Yeah. Okay. And so um, for some men, it's the business case. And if you could all see me right now, I'd be like putting my hand over my mouth, yawning, like, okay, business case. Hey, it's important. Yeah. And, and it's never enough. And yeah. so the partnership of the head and heart 
that 18 inch journey from the head down to the heart is what I'm encouraging men to do. And so what do I mean by that? Well, Mm -hmm. we all had a mother or a mother figure. So we have some experience with a woman in our life. We might be a heterosexual man and we have a spouse who works or not. We might have a sister. Um, So when a man listens to what it's like for a woman to be in a man's environment or what it's like to try and compete, um, what happens, and most men won't label it as such, is they feel, they have empathy. And what usually comes out of a man's mouth is, what can I do? That's what we want to hear because Mm -hmm. now a man is connected. He's got ignition. Maybe it's the business case. Maybe it's the personal case. For some men, it's maybe it's just the right thing to do or Mm -hmm. it's the smart thing to do or it's a moral reason. Our little joke between my partners and I is, we don't care which one you pick. <laughs> pick any of them. Just, just pick one. <laughs> and so part of the reason why I, I put together this conference is going to a lot of women's leadership events. I was one of the few men there. Yeah. And there's some of us that are, you know, we've developed calluses and, and a level of comfort where we can go and we can be totally comfortable. But the masses, most men, and, and I make the presumption that most men want to be better men. Mm-hmm. And, but, and they're afraid. They're afraid to say the wrong thing or they don't know what to say. Mm-hmm. And so the whole idea behind the conference and this whole topic of being a male ally and engaging men is to reach the masses, to galvanize, to help these men get off the sidelines yeah. and start thinking not just what's in it for me. And that's important. We got we to gotta hit that bullseye first. Yes. But what's in it for the women in my life, my kids, my son who is watching me, if I have a son, my daughter who is looking and relying on me and needs me to be her advocate. Yeah. So as long as a man can you know, start thinking about that for himself, then there's this moment where it goes from me to we. Mm. And so that's the intention. And so the conference is a step into the shallow end of the pool and, and uh, see other men. And because I've done so much men's work and done men's circles, one of the, these little miracles happen yeah. when men show up in a group environment. The first, when another man talks and says the truth about what's true for him, usually what happens, this is miracle number one, a guy will say, oh, I'm not alone. Yes. It's not just me. That little moment is huge. 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 Then a man might speak and get some, just some release and some relief just speaking his truth, right? Yeah. Another man may see other guys saying, I'm doing this, and it's like it's infectious. Yes. So I'll stop there because like I told you earlier, I could go on and on and on. Well, no, it's great. I mean, and you know, I work with men who – you and I have had this conversation too. You know, I think it's really important for men to to be with other men and do work with other men. And there's a place where we as women hold where we can be allies for men, you know, and men That's come right. to me feeling like, I don't know who I can share these vulnerable things with. You know, I've been leading, I'm a father, I'm a husband, everybody needs me to hold it together. And I think there's a really powerful way you know, that I can hold men. And I also send men to men's groups and conferences like you're talking about, because yeah. right until you actually hear another man say this thing that you've been thinking or, you know, his own yeah. struggle, you can feel really alone. Yeah. A- alone's a big thing. And, and the holding it all together takes a lot of energy and yeah. it's not a good long-term strategy. And, and when men, and I, and I recognize in our conversation today, we're kind of straddling back and forth between this, the corporate space, which the conference is, and all the men's work I've done. And, and basically, I'm the ambassador between the two worlds. Yes, I'm exactly. in the translation of all of it. So we don't need to talk very much about corporate, but what is important here is this topic of healthy masculinity. Yeah. And, and so there, are, there is no other conference in the world that's bringing healthy masculinity into the corporate context under the auspices of inclusionary leadership. Wow. So, you know, my three partners were, were three men that stand for healthy masculinity. Mm. Michael Kimmel is, is, uh, is part of our, he's one of our advisors and he founded the center for men and masculinities out of Stony Brook, New York. Mm-hmm. So there's this divide that's closing. 
Yeah. And, and we all can agree, I'm sure, that toxic masculinity isn't serving anybody. It's not serving us men. It's not serving the women in our lives. It's not yeah. serving our organizations or our communities or our kids. Yeah. So there you go. Well, yeah, and I like going back to that that very important topic, I think, of the fact that a lot of men do feel pressured to hold it together. And I'm curious for you, um, this may seem obvious, but what you see as the, the another option or the other path for these men who have been holding it together and feeling like, I, I don't know what to do. I can't actually let anybody in. You know, do you have a, a, a next step for them? For them, sh- what, short of going to a conference, you mean? <laughs> sure, yeah. exactly. Right? Well, yeah. so, so, so it's a big step for a man to decide and to, and to confront that he might be in a wake-up call moment in his life. Right, like maybe there's a, a divorce, a job loss, some isolation, he doesn't have male friends, something that like has rattled his cage and in that moment has him say, it could be a death, it could be a relationship breakup, whatever, that has him say, you know what, the bag of tricks that have gotten me this far isn't gonna get me to the next level and I recognize usually pain has been prodding me and getting my attention, that's kind of the unfortunate truth about the human condition, that I'm gonna, I need to do something. So in that moment, a man has a lot of options that a lot of your listeners may not be aware of. The biggie would be go do a men's weekend like the Mankind Project, the New Warrior Adventure Training. I'm a co-leader there. They're all over the world. You can go to www.mankindproject.org. That's a big leap. You can go to a local men's group and start practicing that muscle of self-examination sitting in a circle. Yeah. That's a big leap. You could buy my book, Wake Up, Man Up, Step Up, Transforming Your Wake Up Call to Emotional Health and Happiness. No one's going to see you. Right. <laughs> you can read it by yourself. <laughs> uh, you, could, you could hire me as a coach or some other person as a coach or Shana as a coach. You know, now, maybe you're in corporate. Maybe you've got, you're on a leadership team. And so, some of what we're talking about, you're starting to see and recognize in your organization. Come to the conference. Yeah. Come with a delegation of men. Talk to your HR person, your diversity and inclusion officer, and let them know about this because it's still being unveiled. So there's, there's, those are the options that I can think of right now that yeah. kind of fit into the crawl, walk, run category. You yeah. can pick your, pick your point of intervention. Right, right. Pick your choice however fast you want to go. And, and actually, right, I like that honoring that you may feel ready to dive in right now and you may feel ready to pick up Ray's book and, you know, take your first step yeah. in the safety of your own home, which is totally okay too. Yeah. I was thinking back to what you said, the 18 inch journey from your head to your heart. Yes. And um, yeah, I'd love to hear you speak about that more. Okay. So, so here's the thing. Um, we're all listening to things like mindfulness and becoming more aware to me. And it's, I'm writing about this in my, in my next book. What does it mean about the head and the heart? So I talk to men about this whole area of real estate below our chin, (laughs) which is where (laughs) all of our emotions are. And in those emotions and the five core feelings that I teach men are mad, sad, glad, fear, and shame. Mm. And all those experiences we had growing up, the painful ones, the stuff that happened to us when we were little and we didn't know any different, in those traumatic moments, what usually happens is, We feel pain. We connect that to a belief about ourselves, and the list of those beliefs range from "I'm not good enough" to uh, uh, "I'm not worthy" to "I'm not lovable," and the list can go on. Now, what's really important is from that belief that is unconscious, we create a behavior to see to it that we don't ever feel that pain again. Right. So, fast forward. Here we are in these adult meat suits, and we get triggered. And rather than feel the pain, the strategy comes forward. So where the mind comes in is being cognizant, cognitive beliefs, being aware that this stuff happened. So the only way you can even go to your head is if you start putting your attention on your body like, oh, I feel fear in my stomach or Mm -hmm. my chin and my face is tightening 
or yeah. I'm shrinking in shame or I'm feeling sadness and this feels familiar. So in that moment, you are literally feeling from your heart, you're feeling your feelings. And to the extent that you can create a bridge to go, oh, this is familiar. Yeah. Oh, I'm in that stuff again. That's a choice point where a man or a woman can say, you know, that silly little belief that I made up about myself, that I'm not lovable, I'm not good enough, I'm not worthy, it's BS. Yeah. It's not true. And in that moment, you can make a different choice around a different behavior. So yeah. for all the men that are listening, this stuff's going to show up in your relationships with your spouse, with your partner, gay or straight. It's you pick these people at an unconscious level to help you heal yep. your old stuff. And if that's not scary enough, if you have kids, your kids are going to bring forward as your teachers. Yes. And you think you're teaching them? Nope. They're teaching yep. you all your unfinished business. Yeah. And so if you take that approach and you start being on the lookout for what am I feeling and what is my, what's the chatter my mind's making up about that, now, I'm not saying that this happens out of the gates. It takes time. But that's well, the right. head and the heart piece. Exactly. Yeah, it's, I like the way you're putting it. And, you know, it's been such an honor for me to get to work with men and actually help them through that process because, like you're saying, it's, it can be scary, right? And to mm -hmm. actually feel and then to let the tears come or to let the anger come or to let those emotions actually come out of you yeah. instead of just being held in some far away place. I mean, you know, that can be really confronting. Here's the real twisted part of all this. So in that moment, when you as a man are like trying to hold on and not let anybody see this, I have enough experience where I've completely let go of that yeah. and showed all of it. Yeah. I, mean, I, you know, on men's weekends, when there's 40 guys on a staff waiting for the men to come up to participate in the weekend, we get ready for the, for the, for the men to come. There have been times where I've completely dropped into a huge piece of grief, thinking yeah. about my brother or something like that, something that got triggered. I had permission and it was safe to do it because these are all conscious men and I'll be damned. But half of the men came up to me and said, after I did that, that they'd follow me anywhere. Yeah. So what I've, what I've learned about vulnerability is that when I'm vulnerable, men trust me. Yes. And I'm going to say that again. When Please. I'm vulnerable, men trust me. Hence the power of vulnerability. Yeah. And I do. I love that you're bridging the men's work world into the corporate world, right? Yeah. Because that's important to hear yeah. in the corporate world as well especially right. in the corporate world. Right. There's no escape right now if you're a white male leader that the all eyes are on you. And companies have gone to great lengths to uh, build employee resource groups, ERGs, or business resource groups, BRGs, for the African-American community, the Latina, Latino community, the LGBTQ community, and on, on and on. So what's been happening of late because I have a real pulse on this stuff, is the 45-year-old white guy is saying, what about me? Now, there could be a not-so-good reaction from all the other non-dominant groups that might say, hey, now you know what it feels like. That's not going to get anybody anywhere. So in fairness to the white guys, we need to meet them where they're at and educate them raise their awareness so that they can make that decision. I'm going to use my power and privilege and position for good because that's the kind of better man that I want to be. That's what I'm really trying to do with the conference and all the engaging men work that I'm doing. Tap yes. into that piece inside of all men. I love it. You know, and you do that, you know, you're going to advance in your leadership. You're going to have more sex. <laughs> you're going to feel better. You know, it's, it's all of those things. Okay, so part of what I'm noticing is that I'm having a lot of emotion come up as you're talking about this. And, you know, clearly there's some old um, wounding here for me yeah. around that question still of like, 
wow, a man would really want to support me or lift me up or all women in general. Like, and it's kind of blowing my mind. I didn't realize how, um, how personal this was for me, I think. Blowing your mind or your heart? <laughs> my heart, for you, sure. You go, right. And so as I'm listening to you and you're in this wonderment of, oh my God, a man could actually want to do this and support this. The, the question that you could choose to answer or not would be, you know, who didn't support you that yeah. you wanted support from? And, and, and guys, I'm asking that question of Shana, just like I'd ask it to you, because when we talk to other people and we admire them, want to be like them, there's a part of us that sees ourselves in them. Right. And so right now, what, what I imagine might be going on for you is I'm this man and I'm mirroring back to you something historical. Maybe a man in your life wasn't like this and there might be a little sadness and that's okay. And it's welcome. Yeah. Yeah, And I think this is actually what it takes as you were saying, right. To get to this place of actually being able to collaborate and being able to lift each other up. Like we have to be willing to feel the pain and I think, you know, to feel the pain together. Yeah. Most of the workshops I've created and facilitated, it's actually, you know, there's some element of bringing men and women together to actually see each other's humanness and vulnerability and feel it together and then just look at each other and, you know, there's, to, to be honest, right, not to yeah. blow smoke up anybody's anything, but the honesty usually is that we're, we end up being so moved. Yeah you know, an honor to get to be there in the other's vulnerability. So a little misnomer, guys, on the word pain that she used. If you could see what I could see right now, you'd mm-hmm. see a smile and the result of a release. So it's often the fear of feeling the pain that's worse than actually feeling. Yes. My little tagline, to feel is to heal. Mm, yeah. And so there's this there's a sweetness right on the other side. Yeah. You don't stop breathing. You don't die. No. Matter of fact, you get release. Well, and the other thing that I'm noticing as this happens is, you know, I think, okay, I've worked with thousands and coached thousands of people and guided them through their own feeling. And then I can go into this place of somehow I shouldn't do this anymore or I shouldn't still have these old feelings or wounds. And I'm saying that because I think that's such a common um, misguided belief, right? And especially for, um, I think from what I've seen for men and women too, but especially men who have risen to these levels of, you know, now I'm a manager, now I'm a CEO, I shouldn't feel this way because I'm at this position. And right, I just want to call that that bluff. You're, you're, you're spot on, and I'll just lend an explanation to that. You know, when I talked about those unconscious beliefs being born when we're younger, um, Carl Jung refers to the shadow, the parts of us that we hide, repress, and deny. So these are parts of you, and they're parts of me, and parts of our audience. So the game, the trick is to bring those shadow beliefs and behaviors out of the darkness and into the light and honor that that's part of you. Because once you're aware of these shadow beliefs that come from historical pain and behaviors, we call that your shadow. But on the flip side of all of that, there's gold. Like from the struggle, what have you learned and what's this unique thing or things about you as a result of that human experience? When I go into prisons, they don't call it shadow and gold. Mm. They call it poison and medicine. Wow. So if you think about it, my poison or anybody else's poison is is what causes dysfunction and hurt and self and others. Now, when you do your work and you find out and you've kind of relearned, you've got medicine. Mm. Like right now, I'm bringing my medicine forward on the call today because my deep core belief yeah. was that I'm not lovable, which is BS. I am lovable. Therefore, I am love. So I bring love wherever I go and whatever I do. That's my medicine. Does that make sense? 
Makes total sense. And I think, you know, I've often thought that I feel so blessed that one of the things I get to do for a living is love men, mm-hmm. you know, and it, it feels similar. Like that's probably why we, we ended up together, right? Is because we have that shared yeah. way. That's right. Yeah. What else do you want men to know? Right. I mean, ultimately, again, I want men to come to your conference and get more of you and more of your wisdom. But in this moment, what else do you feel called for for men to hear? Um, well, I really believe that we are at an extremely important time in history where we are. And I can use this sports analogy with men. That's something that a lot of us guys do in the business setting or with a bunch of women. We use a sports analogy uh, and they don't know what we're talking about. Right. And I'm like, uh, to be fair to the men who aren't into sports, (laughs) um, I'll use, I'll use two analogies, but we're like in the first inning of a nine inning game, or we're in the first act of a four act play. Um, And so what I want, men to hear is that we all have a a role and a responsibility in this turning point. Yes. And it's, and, and it's for us, it's for our partners, it's for our children, it's for our communities. Yeah. And my request, my plea, my invitation, uh, my vulnerability is I can't do this alone and I need your help. Yeah. I need your support. And thank you for saying it yeah. that way, right? That this yeah. is actually vulnerable for you. Totally. Yeah. I don't have all the answers. No. And so that's, and, and, and here's one other thing. You could, in my new book and in my TED talk that I'm working on, my first of four points is we can choose possibility over pain. Mm. Mm-hmm. And when I do my TED talk, I talk about all the pain that got my attention. Right. So I am like most people who have gone through this are trying to, you know, reduce the pain, but the reframe here is consider the possibilities. Be a great male role model to your son and your daughter. Be a great partner. Feel good. <laughs> have a great life. Be, be in your heart, you know, cons- consider the alternative. <laughs> Living in your head, a lot right. of anxiety and fear and frustration. And, and alone, alone, uh, and right? Alone. I mean, and alone. that is what happens. Yeah. Yeah. You could actually, if you go this path, have deep male friendships. I wrote a chapter in my book, Wake Up, Man Up, Step Up, Real Male Friendships. And what's that, what that's all about. Yeah. So it's not just about watching games. It's about being real. Yeah. Calling each other out on your stuff. Yes. Um, sharing your struggle. Yeah. You know? That's it's the new macho. Yeah, I like that. The new black, the new macho, the new right. And I had I had another conversation on this podcast with a man where we actually really talked about how men can start to open up to each other and also the importance of listening. So you can check out that one. I think I called it how to how to stop trying to be a man. Um, But right, the importance of actually listening to each other and asking questions too that guide the other person in front of you, whether it's a man or a woman, but especially with your, your men friends, like from their head to their heart and really listening in that way. Yeah. So I just want to say thank you again for doing this work in the world for again, this, this vulnerable journey. I mean, I could look at you in some ways and think you're so passionate. You're so eloquent about this. You're so clear, right. About your mission. And in a way, could have this idea of, oh, well, it's not vulnerable for you because of that. (laughs) And again, I just want to bring it back to that. All of this is vulnerable for all of us. And I'm, I'm grateful for you, you know, your willingness to, to stand up and admit that and say, this is something deep in your heart that you care about. Yes. And that doesn't make it, um, yeah, I, I think again, it's like, you're such a great example for men leaders who have these visions and have these missions and think, well, maybe because I'm at this point, I shouldn't feel this way, but, but you do, we all do. Yeah. I just thought of something. Um, if the conference is too far of a reach, yeah. if they go to my website, um, 
www.genderleadershipgroup.com. I believe on there, there's a place to sign up for our newsletter. Yeah. And we're, we're pushing out a lot of content, you know, videos and this and that. And so, and we'll announce Twitter chats with the good men project, things of that nature. Um, so if you just want to, if you're curious and you want to learn more about this, you can, you can, uh, go there. Go there. Great. Okay. Well, thank you so much for this. And, you know, I'm a huge, huge fan and an ally. So I look forward to supporting all of the men you're working with more. Thank you so much. Yeah. I'm so glad you joined us for today's episode of Man Alive. I hope it gives you a sense of what's possible and how good your life can be. If you like what you heard, I'd be so grateful for you to subscribe to Man Alive and write a quick review that helps men like you find us. And again, head over to shanajamescoaching.com slash manalive to get outtakes, videos, and raw footage I only share there. These are some of the most interesting parts of these expert conversations. You can also grab your copy of The Unknown Power to accelerate your career and solidify your confidence with women because the two are related and I know you don't have to settle for one or the other. Join us each week for a new episode of Man Alive.